Hey, this is Jason Miles with the Georgia Manufacturing Alliance and Manufacturing News Network. Uh, we've got a great call lined up today. We're going to be talking about um, manufacturing, of course. That's the core uh, focus that we have every, every call. But we're going to talk specifically about the financial impact that uh, the coronavirus is having on manufacturers across the state and across the nation. Um, we've got a really uh, jam-packed schedule today. We've got a lot of people that we're going to be talking to. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the call today so that you'll have an, an idea of what we're going to get covered. Um, and then, uh, and then, then we'll watch the call. Again, the Manufacturing News Network is designed to, to make sure that we keep industry professionals up to date on current events as it relates to manufacturing, as, you know, along with the uh, coronavirus and what that looks like. Um, the format for today, uh, first, our, our first speaker we'll, we'll bring on board is Tim Edmonds from PSI. And PSI is a great uh, member and partner and has been a long time uh, sponsor of GMA. Uh, they, they've got a very unique perspective. They're a distributor uh, as well as a manufacturer. So we're going to pick Tim's brain a little bit on that space. Uh, Laura Matajewski with HLB Gross Collins, again, a, a great friend and um, industry expert. She, she heads up the manufacturing sector for HLB Gross Collins. She's going to give us some insights on what's going on uh, as it relates to the new uh, Family First uh, uh, resp response um, on the uh, MLA and how that's going to impact uh, employers, but also uh, we'll be able to dig in a little bit more in depth on some of the things you might not have thought of as a manufacturer on the finance side. And then uh, Josh LeBaire, uh, again, another fantastic manufacturer, a uh, good friend of ours, and he is uh, uh, he, he's with Sonin Battery USA. So give us some insights. They've, they've modified some of their shifts and, and, and having a little bit of an impact on employees, and, and so we're going to share again. The goal for this is to share best practices. Um, I believe that there's three things that we'll oh. calls is uh, information. We're going to share information. We want to make sure that uh, information, communication, and relationships. So the information we're going to share is, is is as timely as I mean breaking news as this stuff un, unfolds. Um, our goal is to communicate with everybody in the space. You as leaders being on this call, make sure that you share this with your team as well, and then continue to build and grow our relationships across the board. So that's the that's the game plan. That's what we're out to do. Um, after Josh goes over, I'm going to give you an, uh, an announcement of some of the upcoming events. We've got some really cool stuff that's posted and some stuff that's not yet posted that I think you'll be really excited about. Uh, Laura is going to have the opportunity. She's sponsoring this, this session. She'll have the opportunity the last 15 minutes to, to get a little bit deeper dive on what's, what's going on at HLB Gross Collins and, and a little bit of her information about her organization. And we'll have, again, open dialogue around that. Um, and then we have a really cool special offer that I'm going to uh, share with you guys at the end of this call. Um, and um, so that's the game plan. So we're going to kick this off. What I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to welcome Tim Edmonds from, uh, from TSI to the, to the call. And uh, Tim? Like to again, like to get a uh, a feel for what's going on in your space. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep you up here on the uh, on the video. Tim, if you would, yeah, there you go. Welcome, Tim. <laughs> All right, can you hear us okay? Uh, we can't hear you, so if you would uh, check your uh, um, make sure you're unmuted down at the bottom bottom left corner. There's a little uh, speaker. Click on that, and that should open up your audio. Glad to. All right. Nope. Not yet. No, hold on a second. Let me make sure I got you unmuted on this end. Um, you may want to actually, while while you're, uh, if you would call in on the no, uh, on the phone number that's listed there, call in and you could actually talk on the phone while you, while you get the video there. So, um, and the, I sent you an email. It's got a link to the, the phone number. Sorry about that, guys. Um, while while Tim's getting online with us there. Uh, I would like to go ahead and uh, bring on Laura Matajewski. Laura, Laura, if you would share with us a little bit about what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What's going on as far as um, uh, what, what's shaking in the accounting world and what do manufacturers, what are the key things that manufacturers are, um, uh, we need to be thinking about as this unfolds? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jason. And good morning, everybody. I love seeing all these faces. It kind of reminds me of that tiled thing on TV with the Brady Bunch. 
Um, but I uh, got to bring a little humor into the morning. Um, so essentially, um, our firm is still operating, you know, full tilt as best we can. I keep getting notices day to day that my clients are closing their offices. So we're going to start running into some situations where we still live in a fairly paper filled environment. But um, I think right now we're all just trying to do our best as some of you have already heard. Um, if not all of you, the tax deadline is still in effect for April. So please do file on time for April 15th. But if you are an individual, uh, individual that's a business owner where like an S corp where you're impacted there, um, uh, as long as you're not paying anything more than a million dollars in for your estimated payment that's due with your extension, um, and then you are fine to pay nothing until July 15th. So no interest, no penalties on that. So what it encompasses is not only your extension payment, but your first quarter estimate payment that's due at the same time. So if you say owed $400,000 and your estimate was another $400,000, you're below the million dollar threshold, you don't have to make a payment. And for corporations, it's a $10 million threshold. So for C Corps. So that was something that was a nice relief. We're still waiting on a lot more information there from that front a lot of pressure in the government to um, look at maybe uh, doing something a little bit more with April 15th extension, we will see. So we're just waiting with bated breath that business is continuing as normal. So right now our job is just to make sure we can answer as many questions for our clients. Um, I'm a big resource provider, so as many times as I can get a phone call and hopefully connect someone in a relationship with someone in my supply chain, uh, to help them out as they may be struggling with getting supplies or struggling with getting logistics. Uh, as we know, I think most of the vehicles on the road right now are trucks. Trucks that are getting products to us, to our grocery stores, to our factories and warehouses. So we're trying to be very respectful of that and do everything we possibly can in this digital world that we've all kind of had behind the scenes, but it's just really become a new norm now. Right. Gotcha. And, and all of us, I mean, there's a there's a million pieces, you know, that are that are floating around. We don't yet know, and, and I think that's that's one of the uh, one of the benefits to making sure that we provide this information on a weekly basis in the finance sector because there's again a lot of moving parts. Um, to give you a little bit of a foundation, the, the how we're structuring these calls is we'll have um, an, um, weekly calls specific to. Um, a certain department in the company. So we're, we're going to be doing one on sales. We've got one lined up. Of course, this one on finance. We're going to be doing supply chain. So um, be sure if you're in the finance uh, department in your company, if you're engaged in that space, this will be a great for you to plug in. Uh, we've got another one scheduled next Tuesday, I think. Um, and I'll let, I'll let you know. It's actually we've got it on the on schedule already. But uh, it'll be a weekly call. That way, as as things unfold. We're going to be able to share current information, uh, again, really focused in the manufacturing space. One of the questions that I had that was, um, you know, we're, we're, we're just under the threshold at about the million dollars uh, uh, tax liability. So uh, I did have a question for you about the, you know, um, uh, manufacturers with the uh, families first, the coronavirus, uh, medical leave and family leave. Uh, what what do you know about that space? I know again nothing's. I don't I don't guess anything is. It was voted in yesterday, and the president is, is expected to sign it by the end of this week. Okay. So what we do know now, and I've got like a whole bunch of stuff up in front of me because so I'm sorry if I'm kind of looking all over the place, um, but we're still kind of disseminating all of the information because the bulk of what the act was for was to provide things like testing and alternate food support and things like that for families. Um, but essentially what's going on from the payroll perspective, i uh, make sure I pull this up correctly here, is um, there is an alleviation in some of the payroll taxes if you're taking a sick leave. And so there's an opportunity there for a refundable credit against essentially your kind of social security side of things. Um, it's the, for fancy lingo terminology, if you want to play some time on Google, it's the OASDI and the RRTA are a few of those under the payroll tax world. So the credit can be claimed on a quarterly basis and it's equal to 100% of the amount of your sick leave wages paid under this new law. 
and the amount of the credit is limited right now to about $200 per day. Um, and then it can increase to around $500-ish a day if the employee is on leave because they're subject to quarantine uh, under the COVID-19. If they are having to self-quarantine or if they're experiencing symptoms of the virus as well too and are seeking a medical diagnosis. So, um, and that credit is limited to 10 days worth of wages. So right now, that is just some of the general information that we've got. Certainly your HR um, and your payroll uh, company, as I see ADP, I believe was on the line at one point, Maya that we work really closely with, Maya Felbegar. Um, So definitely reach out to them because they're gonna be dem disseminating this as fast as we are, but there is opportunities there and you wanna make sure that you're careful in how you apply for this. There's also things at the state of Georgia level. We just issued out a notice yesterday, so I'll share that over for everybody's smart notes as well too, where um, there's opportunity under an emergency rule 300-2-4 called partial claims. And so that rule mandates all Georgia employers to file partial claims on behalf of full-time and part-time employees if it becomes necessary to reduce your working hours or if no work is available as a result of the virus. And ultimately, the state of Georgia is trying to do this to allow for faster distribution of unemployment insurance benefits. If you do not file under this, though, right now, though, then uh, and you don't follow this mandate, then the Department of Labor um, uh, is going to look at you a little differently and kind of charge you more on your unemployment insurance benefits there. So you want to be careful with that. Make sure you're making phone calls to your accountants and especially to your HR people, your payroll companies, because they are going to be on top of this as quick as we get information. Right, right. And that's that's critical on this. I mean, thank you, Laura, for sharing that because, you know, as, as an employer myself, I mean, we've got three full-time full -time staff and a couple part-time folks, and, and it's, a, it's a different game right now, trying to make sure that we um, uh, take the right steps. And, you know, we talk, we had people on the calls that were, you know, from, uh, uh, it was, you know, we've had, had post companies uh, from, mom and pop machine shops all the way to Bluebird Bus with 1,600 employees. They have a different game, but we're all still employers. We still have to follow by the rules and figure out what those rules are as we go. Um, that's the most important part of, again, part of this call is after we finish this call, we'll archive this video, uh, which will be the Zoom call, and also add show notes as they come available. So, or, you know, when you, when you send me the show notes, you kind of recap and link back to whatever we need, uh, whatever information our, our folks need um, if, if they, you know, are, are, are interested in um, engaging you guys, for sure have that conversation. But um, I do want to touch on one other, one other kind of uh, piece that a lot of manufacturers are dealing with right now. They're just thinking about what's the next step. In the event, um, I, I actually had two calls yesterday of manufacturers that are in our community that have said that, you know, we had somebody in our, our crew, you know, their husband, one of them was a husband and one of them was a wife of an employee that tested positive and now they're going through the shutdown procedure. So what do you do? Um, so we're gonna have that conversation next week, you know, what they did and how they did it. We may have it before then, depending on our, our scheduling. But um, what does the manufacturer need to do? We'll talk about the operational shutdown, but in the financial shutdown, what are some of the things that the people in the accounting and finance departments and manufacturing companies, what do they need to do to prepare in the event that there's either, you know, more restricted travel that comes up to be able to go in and out of work or, um, uh, or a facility shutdown? So what, is, what does that look like? What would, what would you recommend for anybody in the finance and accounting departments to, to prepare for? Absolutely, yeah, and I've got quite a few that are already in this in this kind of world right now that have chosen to shut down for one reason or another. Um, but essentially, make sure that you've got all of your technology resources. If you literally have to send your people home with, you know, monitors from their desk, etc., you know, um, people have been having to rush out and buy some laptops and make sure IT works on getting those set up there. Um, certainly, the more you can kind of scan things in and keep them electronic, though I think, you know, hindsight 2020, it'll be harder. I know I'm already dealing with this situation with some of my clients, but call your bank. Call your banker, talk to your banker, make sure you have that conversation, 
check on your line of credit, what's your availability there, look at your receivables, ask them what the options are. If you qualify, um, the SBA just came out with uh, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. That's something that you wanna reach out to your bank about and also um, hop on the sba.gov site as well too to get some additional information there. But um, yeah, really you wanna make contact with all of your important service providers and then make sure your people have the right tools that they can work with um, from home, ensure those are set up. And then just, uh, you know, I think the big factor for like our CFOs and our controllers, they're spending so much time now with management and, and basically board meetings have become a new kind of norm for mm -hmm. talking about what is really going on behind the scenes. It's not just this, you know, kind of, couple times a year or once a year thing. These are becoming really important to look at projections on cash flows. Um, where's their access to capital? What are your plans are? Everybody's got a lot of things going on with technology and they have great data that they've been pulling from their, um, their supply chain and from their plants. This is the time to start really using it and disseminating it because it's gonna tell you when machinery, if you're gonna be running short shifts, when things might be uh, needing repairs, so you can plan accordingly for who needs to be out on the plant floor as well. And of course, unfortunately, if you have to shut down completely, which I have uh, seen that in several instances now, then you know, you're know you just, the big factors there are just making sure that you're leaving everything set so that you can hopefully you know, gear yourself back up as soon as possible. But make sure you touch base with your relationship people, your, your bankers, your legal counsel, your insurance agents, your accountants, and we're all here to help you in the very best way possible. So that version of your supply chain, that's crucial right now. So make sure you're touching base there. One other thing is, you know, I mean, would you recommend, I know that different companies have different challenges with um, uh, security and, and, and access to information. You know, do you have, a, I mean, any recommendations on like a go bag? Do you take, you know, take your laptop and do you have, you know, access to, I'd be a little late in the game right now, you're talking about, you know, having uh, uh, virtual access. Yeah. Calls? You know, any, any, any suggestions on that? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that they're offering now with free subscriptions. Actually, every time I turn around, there's something else online, whether it's through something like Zoom or GoToMeeting. Um, we use um, we use GoToMeeting and Skype a lot. So um, I would say, you know, check with your IT person if you've got one. I'm sure they've got recommendations. And most of them right now, if you weren't fully engaged in a subscription, they're offering low to almost nothing right now for a subscription, at least for a month or two. So that way you can make sure all of those platforms are great ways to share information. I know I use Skype a lot and I will video in and I can see somebody's screen right there. So when I have a team member or a client having an issue, I can just jump right on it at that point in time. So definitely check those sources out. And of course, I'll share forward anything else that you know I have found helpful working with my clients as well too as part of our smart notes from this call. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, that sounds great. Well, I'm gonna I'm uh, hop over to Tim. Can you hear, uh, Tim, we can, let me see if uh, we, we can see. I don't know if we can hear you yet, stand by. Uh, uh, is your audio, did you get your audio squared away or no? It's okay, so this is a silent film and we're just gonna roll with it. So I'm gonna read the lips, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I'm thinking he's saying, but no, 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 no. We're, not, <laughs> we're gonna, again, apologize for the, the technical challenges, but. Uh, we're going to uh, slide over to Josh LeBaire, uh, and he is, a, again, a great, a great partner with GMA. He's worked with us on several different things. Um, and Josh, tell us a little bit about what's going on in your space, brother. I know you got some really cool stuff shaking, uh, and you've got a different, different challenges as a manufacturer. Tell yeah, us. Uh, can you hear me okay over there? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so... Um, Actually, the funny thing is, I, you know, some of you may have seen me right now. I'm looking down right now. I was actually um, communicating right now with uh, uh, my, my manufacturer in China right now. Okay. Uh, and so, um, to me, it's been, it's been just, you know, since the, the beginning of this, like, you know, when we started hearing news out of this, uh, Sonin has been, you know, contacting. We have uh, a few uh, uh, key partnerships in, uh, in uh, the, uh, the Asian um, supply chain. And, um, and working with them of, of um, seeing what we can do at the very beginning. So it's kind of so, hitting things off. Yeah, so let's take one step back. If you would just, again, tell us uh, oh, and what, what Sonin is, what you guys do. 
So Sonin, um, so I, I am the director of operations here at our, our headquarters here in Tucker. Uh, we, we make uh, energy storage systems uh, that are for residential use. Uh, so we, we get a lot of components um, uh, to put our, put our product together. We do light manufacturing here. So what we do, um, we, you know, most of our, our components come locally, um, but, uh, but there's quite a few things like our batteries um, where, you know, a lot of the lithium is in, is in China. So we have to get our batteries from China. So okay. that is a, um, and then we have uh, parts that come from uh, Japan, Italy, um, and, uh, and, and a few other spots. But, um, but the key thing is, is this, we, you know, for, for Sonin's uh, purposes, we've been trying to head this thing off at the very beginning, starting in, in late January of just working on our partnerships, seeing what our, um, how our uh, uh, supply base is affected and just having constant communication. I right? just communicating with my uh, Chinese supplier through WhatsApp right now. Um, hey, really? Yeah. Just, and she just messaged me, Hey, how are things going over there? What's going on? How are, how are things on your side of the pond? And I'm, Okay, this is what's going on with me. How about you? How are things going? Are you guys have returned back to work? So, um, so it's been a it's it's been a struggle to get communication in and out of uh, China as of late. But when we have been able to get in touch with each other, we've been going back and forth and making sure that um, we can communicate um, recovery schedules and what can be done to continue the flow of product to the uh, uh, to the U.S. All right. All right. Uh, I, I, that's that's great information, and we do have a call that we're going to be talking uh, next week lined up the supply chain. I'm gonna have you. You were excited about having you back on talking about how that impacts the supply chain. Absolutely. But specifically today, finance side, what are you seeing as far as I mean? Have you got have you have you built up stock? Have you had any conversations with your suppliers? Yeah, we. Uh, the, that's it's, you know, you know that's. That's that's you know that comes into what I was talking about with you know working with the with the supplier here because we're working with long lead items for these batteries and stuff, and you know payment terms on this is is critical. So you know my payment terms are um, kind of funny to where I um, I start paying for uh, the terms start when for me as soon as they leave port. So okay, uh, so nice. yeah, so I, I gotta pay I gotta you know I gotta pay for these a lot sooner than what I normally do. So it's been working with the supplier on payment, you know, just making sure that our, um, with the uncertainty to adjust, um, adjust payment options with, with the supplier, you know, not, you know, and, you know, not be late, so to say, but to be able to work with the supplier as we have faced the uncertainty of future cash flows that are coming into the company. So right. it's, it's, um, it's very critical, especially, you know, when you're working with, you know, a lot of, a lot of shops in the Georgia area that are small shops and you know they they are highly cash flow dependent so right. making sure those you know mouths are fed too and making sure those things are, are happening um especially with the end time uh undue time of certain uncertainty um yeah. what we're doing you know and also too is what we're doing here as well as um you know we, we you know um uh lord mentioned about you know limit you know limited staff closures and stuff like that you know we're we're up and running still here at the at our headquarters our production team is still running um you know having a lot of full staff right now we are full staff right now um in in you know in the in the terms of being um all people are still working uh okay. so people who can work from home we have an alternating shift schedule so uh my um my my planning uh my planning team comes in on uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. My purchasing team comes in on Tuesday and Wednesday, so we always have somebody here. Uh, HR is coming in as needed. Uh, they don't live too far away from us. Um, and then uh, our customer service base has been able to um, to uh, to work from home and have uh, you know we have voice over IP um, uh, communication, so they're able to still take calls from our customers and being able to facilitate their needs. So it's, it's very, you know, it, and we're all learning. It's, it's, you know, it's great that you're having this because we're all learning, you know, it, it's not like any one company has the silver bullet to, you know, to solve all this and say, okay, well, we're, you know, and, and nobody is immune to this. You know, we're, we're all feeling this at some degree or not. Uh, but the key, you know, but for us, the, you know, the key thing has been, is just to um, just be in constant communication with everyone here, getting out to the staff and making under, uh, understanding that, you know, Hey, if you have to be in, 
you know, we, you know, we, we call it, we, you know, we're following the golden rules, you know, making sure that we are uh, distancing ourselves as, as possible, limit their exposure, the amount of time that you're in. Um, I'm only in right now between the hours of when production is working and then I go okay. home and then, um, you know, making sure people are wiping down where they, they, you know, they've been working, you know, uh, disinfe disinfectants and making sure that, you know, that we, you know, we limit those touch points on that. So it's, it's, you know, it's something that we're, we're learning something new and we're applying something new every single day. And it's just, um, it's, it's been working for us as this, as of this point, um, and just being able to, uh, and, and like Laura says, uh, having an active Amazon account to order monitors, docking stations, keyboards, mouse, you know, all those things so people can work from home. So it's, it's definitely, um, it's definitely um, a trying time for everybody in manufacturing. Um, and then uh, combating the finance side of it is understanding all the new things that are coming out on day by day. You know, and um, and trying to try to weed out all the disinformation that's coming out. Hey, we got this going. No, no, no. That's that's in this stage. We're not in full full effect of it yet. So we need to you know wait until you know you know like um, Laura's saying. Oh yeah, this bill was passed, but it's supposed to be pa you know signed by the president by the end of the week. And it's just being able to uh, for all of us to follow up on those measures and being able to react as those things happen, not as when we hear about it, but as they happen. Right. Right. And that, that's critical. I mean, and again, I think, like you said, communication is, 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 is key. We got to make sure we have accurate information. We need to make sure we communicate it with all of our team. Like Laura was mentioning, we got to make sure that you have those, you know, those board conversations, those tough conversations is uh, earlier rather than later and be very transparent, you know, and, and then <laughs> continue to, 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 to build on and grow the relationships that we have. You know, we're, uh, our, our business, as you guys know, I mean, we're a face-to-face, belly-to-belly kind of organization. We, we're all about doing live events. Um, the, uh, the, the cool piece about that is, um, is, is you're able to build in, you know, deep, deep relationships. And that's one of the reasons I like using Zoom rather than just doing a conference call, is it allows you to be able to see a lot more and engage with folks. So um, uh, you got to make sure that you talk up and down the supply chain. You, know, you, you mentioned that we got to make sure that we're talking to our our, um, our vendors, and, and as importantly, and even maybe more importantly, explain to our customers what the what the delivery schedules are going to be. Um, if things do really get uh, even more restrictive with travel soon, um, what's that going to look like for you in, in your business? Uh, you know, uh, the one thing about manufacturers, a lot of you can you can uh, work from home in a lot of areas. But you can't, uh, well, I was talking to Daniel Defense, you know, I mean, those guys like, you know, we, we, we can't send CNCs home with our folks. You know, it doesn't, doesn't quite work out that way. But, um, but one of the things that I think it was Daniel mentioned that um, internally they added a, a really cool uh, adopt a door program. So each of the employees, once a day or twice a day, they'd go out and wash down the handles and any touch points and stuff. And I thought that was a pretty you know, that was a, a unique way to and their shift, they, they work basically a shift and a half. And, and to accommodate for school closures, they're, they're moving their shifts around so that their employees, those that, that have school age kids, are being able to work different times. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's all about coming up with those, you know, those alter, alternative um, means of uh, being able to get work done. Um, yeah, I, I have a, um, a, a, um, a person on my, on my staff who is in production but is faced with, you know, having to be home because of school and uh, daycare closure. So, you know, and that person can't take the production work home with them. So what do we do? So we find alternative means. Okay, well, we have a, we have a website full of, of information. Okay, I want you to go through that website. Here's a laptop, go home. I want you to go through every one of that website. I want you to find all these errors. I want you to find all these different types of things. I want you to do all these things that we have to do anyways, but when Josh, I think we lost you today. Oh, did we lose signal? Oh, really? Everybody else is back. Sorry about that. Uh, I think we lost Josh. Hold on just a second. Um, hold on just a second. We're working on it. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, Laura, can you still hear me okay? I think we lost Josh. Yeah, I can. I can't. Yeah, yeah, it's it. it I, I know these things can be tricky sometimes. Okay. Oh, wait. 
Josh is back, I think. Yep. Josh is back. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah. So yeah, so we, you know, we, um, it's all, it, to me, it's just all about finding those things that can be done that, you know, that we always put off, you know, we do, you know, um, we're calling it right now here, the spring cleaning. <laughs> I love it. You know, it's, you know, go to the website, clean this out, you know, uh, you know, um, we have a, we have a, uh, a, a plethora of leads that the sales team has not been able to get to yet. Okay. Right. This person can go onto the, the leads and call everybody and, and say, Hey, you know, let me tell you about Sonin. Right. <laughs> so, right. You know, just, just find an alternative means to keep people going and to keep the company going is, is critical. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I, I love that mindset, you know, um, internally, <clears throat> in, I mean, internally, we're kind of running in, running in some of the same challenges, you know, we got the team, uh, uh, Wesley and I are here in the office, but uh, Brittany and Heather are working from home, you know, doing this remote thing. We're figuring it out as we go. Uh, and we're having them reach out to all of the active members in GMA. You'll be seeing an email soon. If you're a member of GMA, we're going to encourage you to go into your member compass, add your personal cell phone or a way to communicate with you. Because a lot, a lot of our members, we only have their business contact phone number and email. So if you want to stay in the communication loop, we we'll encourage you to enhance your personal profile on your member page so that we can make sure that we stay engaged and, and, and get the communication to you. Because in the event, I mean, you know, not, not saying it's going to happen, but let's just say that Monday um, we had extensive travel restrictions nationwide. They did that in Italy. You know, they, they initially stopped um, uh, border security in, area, in small areas that they went to national to, to eliminate travel to the country and then they pretty well locked it down. They said you can continue to go to work and then two days later they locked it down all the way down to the only place you can go is to the doctor in the um, grocery store. Right? So I, I pray we can get to that point. But if we if we got that call Monday or Tuesday, what would that look like for you in business? And are you ready for that? You know, have you got your go bag ready as best you can? Um, and and for us, are we able to communicate with people? We don't want to miss out on that. If um, uh, if we got information we want to share with you, and the only contact we got is your company email or your company phone, it makes it a little tricky. So so uh, we're going to, again we'll give you some instructions on how to make sure that that happens. Um, um, so we covered a ton of information. Uh, I did put a note up. Uh, if anybody has got specific questions um on on manufacturing and you see there's plenty of notes that are that are popping up on the um the group chat um they're uh, uh, ace microtechnology they mentioned uh they're uh, again a long time uh engaged partner with gma they're a microsoft partner and they have offered six months of teams communication for free it's a really cool deal um that's a great value add if you're interested in that and again, what other questions has anybody got for manufacturers that we can address on the call? So I'll just throw that here on the financial side. Um, okay, so the question was, uh, what are manufacturers doing? What measures are you, can you take to overcome loss of revenue uh, based on the virus issue? Josh, you want to take that one on? Yeah, unfortunately, this is, you know, this is, this is hitting every market. It doesn't, you know, this is not a, it's not discriminating against any manufacturer or retail or any types of uh, businesses out there. Um, you know, uh, what, what we've done to kind of shore this up is, um, you know, is, is having partnerships with, with, you know, not even on, not only on the supply side, but on the, um, on the revenue side as well. It's being able to, you know, is to work with the, with the, um, with the companies and you know that we do business with and understand that hey you know we understand we want to keep making product for you we're going to understand that this is going to go by at some point you know and uh but we want to continue doing business we want to continue working those relationships and then uh making sure that we uh continue to deliver on the product that we you know that that you know contracts are out there and promise and everything like that but we understand that you know some people don't want to take the liability on that so it's just a lot of it's a lot of working through and a lot of conversations that need to happen um, and they need to be ongoing. They need to just continue to be um, always, you know, worked on right now. Our, our sales team is, is on a, um, is travel restriction as well. Uh, so um, 
so what they're doing every day is having, you know, having WebEx calls, having, you know, phone calls and, and just constantly touching base with every one of their partners and making sure that, you know, they understand that, um, that we're with them, uh, you know, and that we, in that, uh, they're with us kind of thing and to continue those streams of revenue, you know, there's, there's going to be loss, uh, during this time. Uh, and then hopefully that picks up again, but, um, yeah, it's, it's uncertain to, you know, how far the cliff, uh, drop is. Right. right. And that's a great, great point. And I really, I'm glad you, 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 you framed it that way. Uh, we do have a call lined up for sales and marketing. So what are you doing in downtime? What does it look like? What can you do? You know, again, we all are in a brand new space. Nobody's been here. Before. Um, so, uh, so we're going to be trying to share some insights and some tools to be able to help manufacturers along that way. And, and Laura, I'd love to get your insights as well. I know you're working with a lot of different kinds of manufacturers. Um, what are your, um, um, you know, what's, what are your thoughts and recommendations for loss revenue, uh, cash flow? Yeah. We talked a little bit about that earlier. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, there's always that golden rule of, uh, you know, at least a couple of months worth of cash in your bank account. So I think what people are doing right now is really making phone calls for things where they might have um, purchased a large piece of equipment for the plant floor, um, uh, checking to see what their flexibility is for that. I saw somebody just posted out there, commercial banker, absolutely, please make sure you're in contact with your banker because that relationship is key there. They're going to take a look at your your line that you have, your any of your other term loans that you've got out there, and talk some strategies with you there, knowing you and knowing your business, um, trying to stay on top of your receivables. So your receivable collection team, make sure that they're in tune and making their phone calls because you don't want people to essentially be using you as a as a bank. Um, yeah. You need to get that connection to support your operations. <laughs> so. And, um, you know, when you talk about employees working from home, there are more resources like I think Comcast, et cetera. I think maybe even AT&T, um, they're offering some discounts on some of their faster internet as well too. But those are some things where you may want to have to shift or you may need to shift some cash over to support your teams that are working remotely that way. But um, yeah, it's really looking at a hard look at what you've already got in the queue and what are what what do you have that you're expecting that you're going to be able to complete with with the resources you have now, and then making some uh, a lot of proactive phone calls. So, but definitely, I would highly recommend you call your um, call me. And of course, if you are working with a banker and maybe you or one of your other providers, and you're just not getting some responses um, because I think we're all scrambling with this, I am more than happy to make some connections for you as well too. So certainly, touch base with that. Uh, with me, um, and I'd be happy to make the right connection for you if you're trying to get a hold of another resource to get some answers. Um, I think we're all here together in GMA because of the nature of our community, um, and certainly I'm one that my my cell is on there. I'll make sure it's on my GMA page there as well too. But um, right now, it's making making phone calls and making sure you have a clear understanding of. What is your ability um, to survive this? Uh, you know, running a few stress tests with your banker, um, taking a look at your availability for borrowings, looking at some of your projects and seeing if you can make some phone calls to push some of the bigger ones off that are maybe not necessary right now, because it's a little bit of kind of, you know, a, a holding on to your cash and then making sure you're bringing your cash in. So it, that's really what people are doing right now is kind of taking a three month look and making a determination um, based on what initial projections were, where are the bigger pieces that might not fill the gap, and then how can they go about doing that? You know, I mean, if truly your your business is at a point where you're not going to be able to cover cash flow, then I think there's a few bigger fish to fry there um, for, for payroll. Um, and so that's absolutely a conversation you need to have right, right now. Uh, so but I think most part businesses have got enough cash the economy's been doing well um, they've been managing their business as well I think it's really just kind of revisiting second quarter and um, making sure that you're keeping money in-house and you're keeping the flow the way it needs to be for your business well Jason and I and all of his accounting wisdom I'll share with you what I'm looking at is financial triage you got to figure out you know one of the most critical things that you need to make sure that's covered Make sure that you're and fixing anything that you can, but also making sure that you're uh, covered as far out as possible. 
with all of uh, the, uh, we don't have money about this. That's, the, that's one of the pieces that we have been talking about internally is uh, with, with, with most natural disasters and business contingency plans that I've seen in the workroom, um, there's a solid open and a solid close. There's a beginning and an end. There's a tornado and it knocks the building down, or there's a fire and you have to look at You know, you know sort of what it's like. And right now, there's, we don't have certain what does it all do? I believe that you, know, you can live on the mindset of lack and fear, or you can you know, look at opportunities and, 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 and have a positive outlook on what is this going to be looking like um, on, because we're going to get through this. We as a nation are going to be able to pull through this. Um, well, I believe we'll be pulling through stronger. It's, it's, it's tough to see it right now, I believe, for a lot of folks, but it, what you focus on all of your time looking at the negative news and the crazy stuff that's going on, we need to stay up to date, no question. But the reality is the things that we can do as organizations and as leaders, specifically on the planning side, if you hit the panic button for your company, um, that'll have ripple effects through your entire community. And you need to make wise decisions. And, and, and I love that you know, folks are communicating as well as they are in the manufacturing space. But uh, I would challenge everybody that's on this call is to take the time now and figure out what you want your, um, what the recovery process looks like. What does it look like on the other side of it? You know, how, what are you going to do when we get an all clear? Now, granted, we've all got conversations about what an all clear looks like. Um, but, you know, all three automate, major automakers called yesterday and shut down. Harley Davidson shut down. I was really hoping for me would be in that. I hadn't, I hadn't placed my order yet, but I know that, that we still got inventory in stock for the Harvey. But um, um, I might get a really good deal very soon. But, but we've got to be thinking about, um, once there's an all, once we say that we're, we're, we're back, um, what does that recovery process look like? And how are you pulling up for that? Because it's gonna come and it's gonna be all clear. We know that that's a process. If we spend all of our time looking at the here and now and the challenges that we're facing right now, um, I think that, I think we give up a great opportunity to do that spring cleaning and to do that plan and to get prepared for what's next. So that's that's the, the piece that I like kind of like. Um, so, more what's your, what's your thoughts in that space? Let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree completely. In fact, I've, I've been keeping an eye on the chat message on the side here. Um, hey, Barry um, uh, from California. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I see he mentioned something there too, and something I missed mentioning. Um, so there's some great um, feedback over here on the chat side of people to take a look at that. Um, uh, you know, when we talk about recovery, and so we've got a couple of months for things like I mentioned, the tax filing, well, Barry mentioned a great point there that if you're not taking advantage of some of the tax credits out there, I mentioned the payroll tax credit, that's an immediate thing from, from the uh, Family Act that is hopefully will be signed by the end of this week. But your business, uh, most likely you're doing things in your business that you're not taking advantage of various tax credits and the research and development credit that Barry mentioned as well too is a really important one that's gonna put money back in your pocket. So I think at this point, unless you were just on your game in first quarter, you're most likely gonna be doing an extension on your, your tax returns from a business perspective. So that's something if you have not had a conversation or had a conversation ages ago, didn't think maybe it applied, that's another way for you to jump on board there. So when we're talking about the recovery side of it and you're wanting to pick back up cash flow, that's a great way to do that. Um, but beyond that, yeah, that's what a lot of people are doing right now is they're triaging and they're talking about what's the next level of future. And I think it's about bringing people back on board. How do we, um, you know, basically reintegrate everybody because who's to say how quickly the new norm is going to shift backwards. We all hope sooner rather than later, of course. But again, I think that's why you need to make sure to rely heavily on your partners and anybody in the GMA group here. That's why like Joshua shared his information. I see, um, I saw Jason from uh, Grenzebach on. I see so many other different faces in here. Um, uh, uh, I see Allison, uh, Tim, of course. I'm sorry you had technology issues this morning, Tim. But 
that's why we're all here as resources for each other. So I'm sure as we're coming up with ways to find, um, you know, creative strategic ways for the recovery side of things, um, we're all willing to, I think, work together. So I think it'll be another great conversation item as we start to work ourselves through this and get past that point of, uh, of you know, okay, we can start shifting back into full mode that's going to be another great conversation to have. But certainly as I hear information, I will ensure to share that out so anybody can feel free to kind of capitalize off of that and help with your strategies. And I think, again, you know, I mean, you need to, need to be actively engaged in as many conversations with your uh, uh, as routine as you can. Make sure you're chatting with your client, you know, and, and, and your banker. Legal, we're, we are going to have a series on legal challenges that may be coming up as a result of this as well. So keep your eye on that. And um, I do want to pitch this back over to Josh. Um, I know, Laura, we had a little, little, little game plan scheduled on uh, on this, but hopefully this is, this is working out for you. But uh, but I do want to kind of pitch this over again back to Josh. Uh, any other thoughts that, that you'd like to share from a protector's point of view? Um, and any tips, suggestions, anything you Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I we're at Sun and we're, we're trying to, you know, find any means, you know, to work, you know, like with the, you know, uh, state, you know, um, federal, you know, um, programs that we can be a part of to, you know, to offset any of these, you know, looking at, you know, how does FMLA play into it? How does short-term disability work? How does, you know, how does, you know, if we had a situation where, uh, you know, an employee was quarantined, um, what do we, you know, what are we obligated to do as a company? What do we, you know, what, what services can that employee reach out to, to, you know, to be able to do this? Cause it's not a, uh, at their own, you know, you know, it's, it's not their, you know, not their fault kind of thing that right. they are, they're ordered to be quarantined. Um, so, you know, and it's one of those things where we're looking at it too, because, you know, it, you know, the, um, you know, what we, what we need to control is our operational expenses. And it's, you know, it's, it's coming a, a difficult task to, you know, where, you know, salary is a, is a huge portion of that operational expense. Right. So uh, when we, you know, when you talk about looking to the next level of when we come back, we need to like, you know, look at what we're here and now is that, you know, Hey, if we had a situation where we had to lay off employees and then we go back, you know, the, the, you know, the, um, the field, the pool for, for a good talent, you know, is not going to be there when you want to come back. So that's something to also look into is that, you know, uh, layoffs may happen, but when you go back into, okay, we're clear of this, you know, when Jason talks about the all clear, um, then we have to, we have to get into a situation where the, um, um, then, you know, we, we may go back to hire those people, but those people aren't there anymore. So yeah. that's a, that's a critical thing to be looking at is that, okay, this short term gain of, you know, of layoffs and, and those types of things like that, you know, you know, is detrimental, but it will save the company. But when we try to go back to go full tilt, those people are not going to be there. So that's a, that's a, one of those things that we'll greatly consider. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. You know, when we were talking about the, um, uh, the, the, the downturn in the economy back in 2008, you know, we, we had that trusty, trusty supply chain. We had, um, things that we've been dealing with and, and, and suppliers we've had for years. And when the economy came back and began to, to pick back up, uh, manufacturers were reaching out to that old trusty supply chain that they relied on for years and years and years, and they found that there were a lot of disappointments. Right. What I mean by that is companies are no longer in business because of the, because of the downturn. Um, we need to be, as best we can, I believe, preparing our supply chain uh, to uh, have redundancy as much as we can in the supply chain. We should have been, you know, these are things most of us have done, but we really need to be dialing that in. And during your spring planning, you might want to be identifying other potential suppliers uh, that you can work with. Um, and with that, what I would like to do is just real, real quick, just again, Laura, thank you so much for your generosity and your support, the information you shared, and for your support and sponsorship of this educational session and this roundtable. Um, we as an organization have had to um, uh, basically rebuild from the ground up. Fortunately, we had some insights on this, and um, my team thought I had lost my mind about six weeks ago when I said, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, seriously, they, they thought they were like, about to go kick me in crazy as I could. <laughs> Started talking the what if scenario six, eight weeks ago, 
and, and, and putting some pieces in place. And I'm so thankful that we, that we had, had this lead time to be able to, to restructure. Um, and, and, and because we've had to restructure, we've gone to a completely digital format. Um, and, and, and again, being very transparent, we got to be able to keep the lights on, keep the employees engaged, being able to keep the, the websites up and the, uh, the tools available. And so we're, we, these are sponsorable events. If you're interested, you know, again, we're not going to talk about a ton of that. But what we've done is we've put together a subscription program on the front end of the website. As we do interviews with industry leaders, we're going to make those available. Those are absolutely free. Um, on the front end of the website, we're going to keep news articles posted. But if you want to be able to sit in and actively engage in these roundtables, we ask for you to subscribe to the Manufacturing News Network. We get an email after this follows up later today. They'll have you a link that you can subscribe. It's ten dollars, nine ninety five per person to subscribe. So if you have your own subscription, and nineteen ninety five for non GMA members, nine ninety five for GMA current GMA members, um, and that'll allow you to have access to the roundtables that we've got scheduled. So we're scheduling um, uh, six events, six roundtables per week. The topics will probably change. It's going to be kind of fluid as we go through this based on our manufacturer's request. But right now, what we got lined up for next week is we have a uh, HR roundtable on Tuesday at 10, a supply roundtable on Tuesday at 2 o'clock. <coughs> I, I, I'm excited to announce that Josh will be on our 2 o'clock uh, roundtable uh, uh, for supply chain on Tuesday. Wednesday, we have one on at finance. Uh, another finance like we're doing today, talking about the financial impacts. We'll have a lot more information on that. <clears throat> Probably a little bit smaller call, so we'll be able to, to dialogue between each other. Um, so we, we got that on the 25th. The 25th in the afternoon, we're doing on, on public relations. The 26th on Thursday, it'll be sales and marketing. And in the morning and in the afternoon, we'll do the executive uh, roundtable. We have announced and we'll be rolling out to you guys we don't have it on the schedule yet, but we've put together, we're going to be doing an open call to anybody in the industry. We're going to be doing a manufacturing town hall every Monday morning at 10 o'clock. Manufacturing town hall is open to everybody, whether you're a subscriber, a member, or whatever. This is a, a way for us to give back and to keep everybody up to date on what's going on in the manufacturing. We'll be sharing the latest and greatest news information to all manufacturers and all people that are impacted in our industry. So that'll be free, open, subscriber, non-subscriber, member, whatever, Monday mornings, 10 o'clock. Um, and then these other roundtables, if you want to dig in, we, we really appreciate your support. Um, if this is a fit for you, we'd love for you. You know, again, we just got through talking about watching every dollar, but that's the reason we got this, you know, uh, a price point at $9.95 a month. We're trying to make it super affordable, so it's not a concern. But hopefully you got $9 worth of uh, information from this call is a sample, um, but um, but that's kind of the game plan of what we've got got lined up. Um, we do have something that I'd like to offer to you guys, and I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, I've, I'm an avid reader, and that's one of the things. One of the other pieces I'd like everybody to do is take just a second over in the chat section on the right side. If you don't have chat brought up, just go to the kind of the bottom of the screen. You can click the little chat button and open that up, and once. You the chat button I'd like you to add your favorite book just right type in whatever whatever you're reading today or your favorite book I'm an avid reader I love uh, I love to learn and um, that being said I found a tool and have been using this tool for many many years it's the business source what the business source does is it consolidates um, and basically gives you the cliff notes of all the greatest books in the business books, personal development, leadership development. Um, and it gives it to you in a snapshot, a, a five minute audio, a 15 minute video, um, and a summary. We have, as an organization, have been able to get a great, great package deal for during this time, especially to be able to allow any of our members and our friends to be able to subscribe to this. It's like 30, 40 bucks a year for a base level. Um, but you have access to the best business summaries that are available on the planet, and it's the cliff notes. Instead of spending you know several hours reading the book, in 15 minutes you get the you get the concentrated information, and it's a great again, it's a great resource. The, the, the link will be in the show notes on how to do that. Um, and this is a great uh, something that you can share with your folks and your team. 
and, and while we're doing the spring cleaning, I believe that we have a great opportunity to do some personal development. So, so, you know, books that you wanted to read, take time, you know, you definitely want to take time with your friend, family and friends, but, um, but spend some time sharpening the saw. I mean, you know, take some time and some personal development. And, and this is, a, again, a really cool tool that, uh, that is perfect timing for you guys to plug into. Um, I've been using it for years because I've got a pretty tight schedule like most of you guys do. And, uh, and this is just a, a really good use, use of time. It's a cool tool that you can use. Again, again. So well, I want to open it back up to our speakers real quick. Um, if you, again, continue to add, I love, I love to hear what you guys are reading because I want to learn from you guys. Um, uh, but uh, if you would, I uh, want to open it back up to, to Laura and, and any, any additional information you'd like to share or any thoughts on that, and I'll open it up to Josh as well. Uh, you know, I think to sum it all up today, um, I think your biggest factor is to take a deep breath, <laughs> um, breathe in and out. That's always a good thing uh, within our six foot uh, differential here um, in our world now. And um, just work, uh, work smart and make phone calls. That's what we're all doing right now. So make a list of all those important people that I talked about that Josh talked about, that Jason talked about, um, make, make a list of all those people and start making some phone calls to them right now. Explain what you're going through, what your thoughts and concerns are, and each of them are gonna talk to you about um, what they're seeing, what they're hearing, and some proactive steps uh, that you need to take right now. They'll give you some feedback on what you've kind of structured and let you know what they're hearing and seeing because we're all deeply plugged into the industries that we're in. And um, certainly, um, as always, uh, we'll share my information out. I am available to help anybody make connections in any way I possibly can. That's what I love doing. Um, uh, that's part of why I've gotten to know so many people in this group, like, of course, you, Jason, and everything that you do, your team, Josh, so many other faces I see on here. It's about the relationships, um, the, the big R word there. So. Yeah please make sure to reach out to me and let me know if there's anything I can do. And certainly we'll be gathering a lot of other questions from people because I think that'll help kind of feed some additional conversation for the next round table. So send those on over. Don't stop it just because we stopped the zoom meeting here. Okay. Perfect. That's a great point. And, and, and this is, this is step one of your networking for the week. I mean, make sure you, I love, Laura, thank you again. For your partnership and your leadership and the knowledge that you shared with us today because this is making an impact and helping our public my space. Absolutely. If anybody needs me to sign a permission slip that you attended the meeting for credit, I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus. I love it. I love it. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, Mr. Josh, share with us a little bit about the, the wisdom of the ages, my friends. Yeah, so I, I can't echo uh, what uh, Laura says anymore. It's just like it's it's one of those things where it's all about relationships, communication, talk to your employees, talk to your, you know, talk to your suppliers, talk to your customers. It, it, this is the time to, you know, to fortify those relationships. And then, you know, um, you know, a lot of it is just facing the brutal truth. This is where we're at right now, understanding where we're at and understanding where we're going from here. And um, a key factor is, is, you know, with your, with your staffs, um, you, you know, we got to be, we got to be upfront and honest with them. We got it. Yeah. We got to be, um, you know, it, leadership is, you know, you know, we need to direct our people. And if our people think that they're not receiving any information, they don't know what's going on, you know, you know, it creates uncertainty in them and that makes them uncertain about their position with the company. So, you know, I, I'm having talks with my, with my team, uh, team members every single day. Um, everywhere, all the way down to the people that are picking the product for me uh, out of the warehouse. You know, right. uh, keep having those conversations and keep letting them know that you know that um, we're going to weather the storm and we're going to get through it together. And you know, things like this, you know, coming together like this are are great things. Perfect. Well, I appreciate the insight on that. Um, I do want to, um, you know, and, and, and one of the things that we're, we're working to do is to try to keep as much more as we can. Uh, you know, in certain times, the things that we fall back on are our habits and our um, uh, just our, our sense of normal. And we want to bring as much of that to the table as we can. We as an organization are working really hard to be able to, to, to keep this, these relationships, our relationships, our connections, our information, 
our knowledge share. We're trying to work as as hard as we can to keep that as normal as possible. I mean, I'm getting up every day, you know, shaving. I don't know how long that's going to last. We'll see. But, but, but shaving every day and, 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 and coming to the office as long as we can, you know, and, 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 and earning my shirt and acting like business as usual, right? And, and as leaders, I believe the more that we can do that, keep that consistency, keep that sense of normal, um, it'll give people peace. We know that stuff is going to change. We know that it's going to, you know, uh, based on everything we've seen, it's going to get worse sooner than it gets better. And we'll just have to deal with that. But, but we can get through it together. We've got to just make sure that we stay together and stay plugged in, and support each other, and answer questions. Um, you know, if you start seeing yourself going down a rabbit hole, call somebody. You know, you got my number, my number's posted on all this stuff, call me. And we're just, we're just a phone call away. Um, and uh, we want to know what's going on in your place. So with all of that said, we got some fun stuff we're going to announce on our Monday call. If you've not, you know, we'll get that posted shortly. All the show notes and the links that we talked about, uh, the information that Laura's going to share with us on the, on the finance and the, uh, the new family leave act. Uh, we'll post that in the show notes as well. And then the access to the subscriber, I mean, uh, the special offer that we mentioned is going to be available for uh, business source. All of that will be in the show notes. Um, and you'll see that we'll keep this posted on the front end of the roundtable call so people can get a feel for what we provide on these calls. And again, Laura, thank you so much for your support, your sponsorship, and, and, and friendship, the knowledge that you shared with this. Again, thank you, Josh, for being such a such a great player on a, on a short notice, putting you on the on 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 the call, and um, and I'm always always here for you. <laughs> I promise we're going to get Tim on the call on on one of the up, uh, upcoming calls. Uh, I will. I, I failed miserably by not getting to check on that to make sure his technology was working. So I'm learning, you know. So so just bear with me on that. But again, you guys, thank you again for your participation. Keep your heads up. We got great stuff ahead of us. Work on that after the all clear is planned. You know, let's work on that together and figure out what that's going to look like. Thank you guys, and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next call. See you guys.